it's running, obviously. See, no start. There you go, that time. Actually perfect demo. Guys, today I'm gonna show you how to change the ignition lock housing on Ford Escape uh, 2008 to 12 and various other vehicles. Today we are specifically working on a Ford Escape 2008. Um, and yes, yeah, so I've been, ever since I've bought this vehicle, it will happen occasionally where I will get a no crank, no start, and I just have to keep playing around with the key. Um, so I changed it with a junkyard uh, ignition lock housing at first, but this one is damaged, um, unbeknownst to me. It's missing the spring in the center, that little hole, there's supposed to be a spring there. Um, anyways, so yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do this. The first step you're gonna wanna do is disconnect your negative battery terminal, of course. So we're gonna do that. So now that it's disconnected, I like to put a microfiber or something, or a rag or a towel or something over it so that it cannot uh, come back in contact with the battery. Okay, so now we are back in the vehicle. Um, here's the most of the tools that you'll need for this. Um, a lot of the, the power tool is obviously not necessary, but you will need a five and a half millimeter socket. Um, and you will need some, a, a cat claw or something like this, uh, just for the wire harnesses. And you'll need just any really thin uh, screwdriver to pop out the ignition, the, what's it called, the cylinder, yeah. So the first thing we'll do is we'll remove the three screws. The last uh, screw is back here. Fuck, it's hard to see where I'm pointing the camera, but yeah, there's one there, there, and there. So we're gonna remove those now. Okay. So then once you have all your three screws out, what you can do is, it's gonna be a bit strange. Here, let me, I don't really know how I can really show you guys. So now I find it the easiest to pry this apart if you just kind of wedge your fingers in there. Um, you can also just pull, like you'll notice this whole thing is very loose now. Okay, that's actually a really good angle for you guys. There we go. So you can just tear it apart like that. Just clips in, so use force, but don't, like obviously make sure you got all three of the screws out. Um, and you'll need to lower your steering wheel adjustment thing at this point. Um, and raise the steering wheel as high as you can. I'm just gonna hold it kind of in place with my knee and we're gonna pull this basically down and you can drop this part as well. Like, um, like this whole, this whole thing can also come out. I just personally, like I could care less about lowering this. It doesn't really need to be done and I don't want to mess with my under, my foot lighting or whatever you want to fucking call that. So you're gonna need to kind of maneuver this around that, uh, the steering wheel adjustment thing upon removal and reinstallation. It's gonna be kind of weird. Um, it's not the end of the world though. So over here, it won't be like this. I don't fucking know why my wires are spliced. I bought the vehicle used and it was already like this, but everything seems to work. So it's not a big deal. So. Here you have your ignition switch. Um, but we're gonna be removing this whole assembly today. So what we need to do is remove this screw as well. This is a Torx T20, but in my case, it's a 5.5 because I wanted to make it easier on myself. So I put the Torx back up here. I shouldn't have done that though, as the screws are slightly different lengths and I'll be installing it properly upon reinstallation. That one is not necessary, sorry. Do not remove this for the turn signal if you don't need to. Um, there's one underneath here right there that's the one as well five and a half millimeter just like the others then you will remove this of course here and there well the wire harness but so this is the tricky part right here this bolt here is gonna be your like biggest issue what i did is i used a dremel to cut a, a line into it so that i could remove it very easily um, you could also use a punch and just like kind of hammer it on the side lightly. Uh, but we're not going to remove this bolt at this time. Anyways, the first step is actually we're going to get all these wires out of the way. 
So we'll first disconnect the ignition switch. There we go. Sorry guys, I really have no room because it's, it's really cold. Right now here, it's snowy outside and I don't want to open the door because I've been running this heater here to keep it warm, but I have it off right now so that it's quiet for you guys. Here's where you'll, where you'll probably need the, um, the cat claw, but I might be able to do it without. You'll also unplug this part here. This is why we disconnected the battery because of all these airbag things or modules. So it's just a little tiny tab there and you can pull it out. And you might need a cat cloth right here, but I don't think I will. There we go. Um, we'll need to also disconnect the main harness here. Um, I think we might need the cat claw there. Um, and also the patch transceiver from here. This is also, now is also a good time to remove the patch transceiver. You can use a small screwdriver or just your hands if they're nimble. Uh, we'll just kind of set this aside. Uh, be very careful with the patch transceiver um as it if it breaks you'll have more headaches than you do now for sure there we go it's kind of difficult to film and do this at the same time the problem here is that you don't want your airbag clock spring to come out of position so you'll need some tape we'll need some tape to hold it in place so now let's go ahead and remove the screws uh that we need to to remove the this whole ignition lock housing other than we're not going to remove this bolt until we're ready to remove this whole assembly okay so now that we got the worst screw out of the way that one uh we're going on to easier things so at the top it's a torx t20 did i even fucking bring a t20 god damn fuck oh no Oh, there it is. Nice. Then the last one. Damn it. Okay, let's just grab that. There we go. Put it into our little... Nice little screw cup holder and our escape. <laughs> screw holder, I mean, not screw cup holder. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so... Now that we've gotten our... All of our connectors disconnected. We need to remove the last one. I almost forgot about that. I wonder if I can remove it. This will be extremely difficult, by the way, if you haven't already done this three times. That's why these are so easy, but you probably might need a cat claw unless you're like crazy strong. But yeah, so you can either use like a a uh, chisel or something and, and and like slowly turn it like that or you can just I just use the Dremel and just cut a, a slot in it so that I can just grab a flathead and we can remove this. Sorry, can I not look through the fucking camera so that I can I can see this properly? Oh, the angle is too much for the screwdriver. I used a shorter one before, but I don't know where it is. So now that we've got our shorter screwdriver, let's get this removed. Honestly, at this point, I could probably do it by hand, but there we go. That's good enough. It's going to be a bit easier this way. There we go. Okay. So there's our bolt. Let's put that aside. And the screw holder of the escape. Okay. So at this point, we're going to want to apply the tape to the steering wheel. I know how ridiculous this sounds, but you do not want... This component, which is now very loose, the clock spring assembly, we're just gonna push it up against the wheel like so, because trust me, you'll need it as close to the wheel as possible to be able to remove it. Okay, so now that we've got the tape in place, kindly holding our clock spring and shit like that, what we're gonna do is we need to separate this part under here from there, from underneath there, so that we can open that clamp. very very difficult to do one-handed i never actually tried this let me put this down okay so i'm gonna pull the the clock spring and pull it towards me while pushing everything else away and now i've got it across so now that we've breached or gone past there we can now open this up 
and it will just start coming down. Now, let's be careful because this is my personal car. There we go. That is our ignition lock housing right there with the ignition switch, obviously right here. This you can remove. If this is in your way, by the way, you can remove this very easily with just those tabs there and there, and it comes out. However, I'm not going to because I bought the new ignition switch. The doorman part number is 989019. Um, I bought it on Rock Auto because it is cheaper than where I work, which is I work in parts, so that's pretty funny. Even with my discount, it doesn't mean shit. So there we go, there's our very important spring, our key and ignition switch. That's what that's called. Um, so yeah, now that it's all barren and all that, the thing that we have to line up here is this part. But before that, we even worry about that, we need to install our, our ignition cylinder. Where's my keys? Okay, so now that we're inside, it's gonna be a lot easier um, to work because it's just inside and not inside of a car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the ignition switch prior to installing this. Okay, I broke the clip and it's still... Okay, well I actually am in awe that my clip broke on my fucking brand new part. How it is. Anyway, so now that we got the ignition switch out, you should be able to see this part here, which is also here, um, like it goes to there. So what we're gonna do is we need to turn the key again in that position so that this can be just simply pressed up and down, like this little pin that locks it in. So we need this to be, the key to be staying basically like this. You have a bit of play like this. Um, so that is, that should be okay. And we'll just, what we need to do is line up the D that's on here, like this indentation with the hole. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna turn this to the run position. We're gonna just turn it so that the D is lined up, if that makes sense. So you spin this part and it turns there. And we should be able to, yep, yeah, it's looking nice and lined up. This is honestly one of the, part of the trickier thing to this. <laughs> I just made it actually look so fucking easy. Sorry guys, um, you might have to play, let me get this fucking, this whole, all this garbage off here. You might have to um, play around with the key a little bit. So if the pin is not going down when you need it to, um, but I, I, you can tell I've, pr I've done this quite a few times. Um, so there you go. And then you're gonna want this to be like in that position that it's in right now. Uh, so you can reinstall the ignition switch. So you want this to line up with that. Just like that. And then you can remove the key. There we go, perfect. That feature works properly. There we go. Honestly, I don't even think I need to do anything about this. This is fine. There's no play, it's in there. There you go, and then now when you insert your key, also, when you turn your key to the on position, this security lock should go down for the steering. See, like that. So you should feel, it should feel the same as when it's in the car at this point. If not, you've probably done something wrong. But yes, it should feel, in terms of the, the tactile feedback from this, it should feel the same way it would as when it's actually in the vehicle. So there we go, time to go put this back in the vehicle. All right guys, so we're back in the vehicle now um, and our ignition lock housing assembly is ready to be reinstalled. So obviously you don't need a new key for this uh, or you don't need any programming or nothing because Keys obviously is still programmed with the path transceiver of the vehicle, uh, or however that handshake works. And then the lock cylinder is your old one. So yeah, we're reusing the lock cylinder. Hopefully you don't need one of those. I sure don't. And the vehicle has 325,000 kilometers or something like that. So 
327, that's what it is right now, actually. The biggest thing about reinstallation here is lining this up, is lining up the, like this part, getting everything aligned, and yeah, you cannot force anything in this, otherwise you will probably cause irreparable damage. Okay, there we go. I finally figured out a camera angle for you guys. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of open this clamshell and just kind of slip it in underneath everything like so, um, like that, there we go. We're just gonna watch this and make sure that we put it there exactly like so, nice. So now that that can't be moved, I'm gonna just pull up on this a bit. And the biggest thing that we're trying to do right now is line up this top part. Let me just... The biggest thing we're trying to do right now is just line up this piece like I've kind of got it already um, so that it can go underneath that metal piece where it originally was, or the plastic piece, sorry. Um, that's the biggest thing that I'm trying to do right now. Um, and as well as keep everything uh, in place down below while I'm also concentrating on the top. That's basically what you have to do here. So then now we're just going to push forward and it's almost there. Just kind of shake everything in around. If you can't get a, this bracket closed like I have, like I almost have, there we go. If you cannot get it like in this way, um, then you need to just like kind of shake and move, just jostle everything about basically until you see it's lined up. And then once you have it lined up, hold it like I am. Make sure that you're taking a look on every area that the screws go. Everywhere that you know that the screws go, make sure that you're checking that it is all aligned properly. So our new lock housing comes with a shear bolt like this. I don't know the I don't know the head size yet, but we're just gonna kind of get it started here. There we go. So this, but this screw is the last screw that we're going to tighten. Just to let you guys know, that's the last. Okay, so now that we've kind of got it. Oh, fuck. There we go. Okay, so now we've got it perfectly lined up. I think. I can't even see. I'm just looking through the camera. Yeah, we do. Okay, so we do have it perfectly lined up now. So now it's time to start uh, putting in screws on the everything that we took out. Like those three that hold this part in. That's what we're removing now. Or putting back in. There. First screw is in, that's the, somehow the most difficult fucking one this, this, uh, so far. Good. Good. Okay. We can now do the shear bolt now that we're done with those fucking hellish bolts and screws and bullshit. I don't know what size the shear bolt is, but it looks like if I'm eyeballing it right, a 10. I actually don't look like a 10, it's probably an 8. I'll bring both. So let's see what that thing is. It's 8. Let's find out. How does a shear bolt work? Is this on Titan? No. I'm assuming that the shear bolt is just gonna actually shear at some point. We'll see. Maybe not. It didn't. Okay. Well, that's good enough for me. I'd rather that be a fucking eight than a, than a flathead, so. I think we'll just leave that there, but yeah, so everything should look like this. Nice and aligned, every screw is in. So what you can do right now is you could start putting back all the wires. That's what we're gonna do. So let's put our light back. Uh, 
There we go. Let's put our, oh, there's duct tape stuck to me. We, you can take off the duct tape, by the way, once you put in uh, this bolt and like this one and the other one. You can take it off then. Okay, so pop in our ignition switch. Actually, you know what? Let's plug, plug in our main, let's plug in our, our Christmas trees, I think these are called. First, let's push these back in. Four, we have cords plugged in, just that it's a bit easier. There we go. We'll bring our Pat's transceiver now back up and around. And we'll put its Christmas tree back too. So the extra hole there is for, is to hold the Pat's transceiver. Alrighty, and there we go. We'll grab our Pat's transceiver and line it up. Top and bottom. Installation is reverse of removal. And they always fucking say that. Yep. Pat's transceiver is back in place. Get this shit off me. Okay, ignition switch. There we go. Nice, and in place. Uh, turn signal switch, I believe. No, I need to get out. I need to get out so I can do this because I can't fucking see what I'm doing. There we go. And then I get out. I can do that. Can also do this one. There we go. All right. Everything's back. Everything looks good. So let's. At this point, you can test it if you want. Um, I'm just gonna put it back together. It's because I know it will work. It's brand new. Why wouldn't it work, right? Let's go ahead and put back all the plastic. Let me show you how to do that because it's kind of a trick to it, I think. So there you go. So you just want to get it like that through there. Then you can start putting it back if that makes sense. It should because I just showed you. This thing's a motherfucker, man. There we go. There we go. So you'll just kind of line up the plastic with the... I find it's easiest to line up the plastic by looking where the key hole is and just like kind of doing it like that and then just grab the other piece and pop it on also make sure all your screws are lined up they are that one is and it's not even the top piece ain't even on so let's get that one on there Okay, so we got it, all the plastic trim back on. Let's put in our screws. Put back in our screws, sorry. There we go. Okay, okay, so let's go connect to our battery positive terminal. Alrighty, let's go ahead and test now that we're, um, now that we're plugged back in. Holy fuck, it's still snowing, bruh. Okay, so we can already tell our key and ignition switch works. We can already tell. Yep. On key works. I can. Ah, what the fuck? Holy shit, that scared the shit out of me. I'm so sorry. That actually very much frightened me. Okay, idiot light position works. Start works. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm fucking talking about. That's what we like to see. This is really dim though, because I have my light down. There we go. I'm surprised it says it in kilometers. Usually it would say it in uh, in miles, right when you first restart. Uh, reset, because it's uh, an American car. Anyhow, car works, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, watching guys.